So, um, this is the conceptual question, which no one has done yet, you know, fine, because uh, <laughs> uh, it's not you until Friday. So I'm going to uh, go through the same uh, exercise we've been going through the whole semester, and we don't have many of these left. Maybe two, three, I think. Um, I think counting this one, two or three. So, um, so we'll ask, see how well uh, generative AI does, and um, I'll critique its response. So far, it's been doing okay. Um, it's been a little bit shaky on the multiple choice timed assessment. You know, once it did well, once it did really poorly, but uh, I don't know. There is some random aspect to, to this uh, generative AI. So um, sometimes you can ask the same question twice and one time it will get it right, one time it won't. Um, if you are working with the GPT in a lower level, there will be a parameter called the temperature that you can set that controls how fun <laughs> your AI chatbot is. So anyways, let me ask this question about simple harmonic motion. Sometimes we use SHO, simple harmonic oscillator. Um, they're fine, they're interchangeable. <laughs> so, what conditions must be met? Hooke's law type restoring force. Um, yeah, elastic restoring force, that's fine. Yeah, must be proportional and opposite. Yeah, that's exactly it. Must have inertia, um, I guess. Um, Sure, um, I guess it shouldn't have infinite acceleration, otherwise it's gonna just go square wave type of motion. Uh, acceleration directly. Sure, it, this follows from one and two. Uh, I don't know if it ne it's necessary to uh, list it independently of one and two here. It's fine. <laughs> if a frequency is not constant for some oscillation, can the, it should say no. Independent amplitude, therefore not constant, cannot, yeah. There must be some n harmonic component. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's uh, one of the things you will see when you see the lecture demo for simple harmonic oscillation. And uh, one of the fun thing to investigate with the pendulum, which is approximately simple harmonic oscillator, is what it takes to break that independence of frequency on uh, amplitude of oscillation. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, example of oscillatory motion where frequency may depend on the amplitude. It might talk about pendulum. Yeah, pendulum. <laughs> Small angle approximates. Yeah, large angle, it begins to... Uh, so I think at large angles, the frequency it begins to go down because uh, it's not quite moving fast enough to compensate for the larger amplitude. Uh, yeah, yeah. Good. Good answers. And uh, so I think uh, when you do the oscillation lab this week, we have um, spring. And uh, one of the thing about the spring we will use in lab, you will find that it um, it's not linear. It doesn't obey Hooke's law. So that spring also might not quite obey. Um, I think it might depend on frequency. The frequency might depend on the amplitude. I haven't quite seen it. It might depend on like where the offset is. But um, so the thing about simple harmonic oscillatory motion is that it's uh, um, quite ubiquitous in the approximate form. A lot of different things. Basically, anything with a stable equilibrium can be approximated as simple harmonic oscillation. But many of those things that can be approximated in simple harmonic oscillation, once you make the amplitude large enough, that approximation will start to break. Unless it's a special situation where it's exactly simple harmonic oscillation, but those are rarer and farther between. So with that, let me go to the second question. Pendulum clocks, okay, move from one city, gravity slightly greater, okay. Uh, here you kind of have to know the formula for the um, the angular natural frequency of the pendulum, which GPT probably knows, square root of G over L. Um, so we'll see. Let's see. Greater, the more force causing it to move more quickly, okay. Is it going to try to do it all conceptually? Oh. The context shorter period of run faster. You need to increase its period of oscillation can be. Oh wow, it's a good conceptual answer. Um, and you know, if you are doing this um, like with an actual clock, you wouldn't. You know, you wouldn't actually need a formula. You would just test it. You know, adjust it a little, test it. So, I think this is good. Um, yeah, it's directly related to its length, but 
not to be confused with the directly proportional <laughs> because it goes as a square root of the thing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, to increase period of oscillation, slow down. In Wait, what? Sorry, one second. Sh um, shorter period faster, correct, and ensure that keeps the correct unit increase its period of oscillation. Uh, this is wrong. You have to lengthen its <laughs> length of the pendulum. It got it right, I think. Um, so it says, you know, longer pendulum has a longer period. That's exactly what you want. So you want it, want to make it longer. And to increase the period of oscillation, you need to lengthen the pen. So yeah, I think once you read through the whole paragraph critically, you can kind of get where it mixed the two up and correct it yourself. But yeah, the paragraph as it stands is not a correct answer because it's uh, mixing up two things. And it comes down to, you know, GPT can think. It's a large language model. Um, it, it doesn't see this uh, internal contradiction that any human being who can think through this will see. So, <laughs> so you know, when you rely on generative AI, just to know that uh, in some sense it's dumb. It, it's not sentient. It can't think. <laughs> Maybe it'll change in the future, but right now, the technology that's available, it can't think. So, yeah, principle, blah, blah, blah. By the way, there's a story, I thought um, uh, Galileo published something that's a basis of um, Benjamin Glass. He might have worked with this guy, maybe, maybe not. I'm not 100% sure. Um, conclusion, you want to... Uh, no, wait, graph this greater, then, yeah, you need to lengthen the pendulum, uh, not make it short. Uh, so, okay, and let me go to the next question. With the use of, oh, yeah, I need to take a zero. It doesn't copy this uh, kind of image formula as well. Um, Mm. <laughs> Let's just see what uh, what function um, the GPT would choose. Uh, the note is sincere. There's no wrong answer. I myself would um, choose a cosine because that's kind of the default in my mind. But I can get that. Sometimes people will think say sine because you know cosine looks like some modification to sine. So people want to think oh sine is the default, uh, which fine not a problem per se. Uh, sine uh, would choose the cosine function, okay, the, and maximum, yeah, which can be great. Yeah, that's really the reason I would give. Um, maximum displacement, assuming zero shift, and then if you are using sine function, okay, yeah. Net initial velocity. Um, it got it wrong. There's a mine. Wait, is that? No, 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 that's correct. Uh, so derivative, velocity comes from derivative position. Take derivative sign is plus cosine ang of angle. And uh, this omega, if you are wondering where that comes from, it comes from the uh, chain rule. Because I guess it's not never writing down the actual form for the function. But if you wrote down the actual, oops, uh, why did I hide the annotation? If you are writing down the form for actual time dependent form for this, it would look like x as a function of position would be amplitude times sine of angular frequency times t. So when you take the derivative of this, you know, take the derivative of this, then you use chain rule. You take the derivative outside first, that gives you cosine of whatever's inside. So you get a times cosine of whatever's inside. And since whatever's inside isn't just a t, it's omega times t, you need to take the derivative of the inside and multiply that. That's the chain rule. Um, so derivative omega t with respect to t is omega. So that's where that omega comes from. And doing this multiple times gives you this omega squared. Yeah, for acceleration, derivative of the cosine is minus a sign. So that's correct. Um, if we use... Uh, how about if you cosine function, then yeah, looks like that. that. And the uh, kind of um, curious thing, oh wait, um, yeah, yeah, I think that's correct. Curious thing is that um, whether you use a sine or cosine, the factor that you end up with in front 
for the acceleration is the same. And that's um, kind of the basis of the, the solutions that we will guess in lecture for uh, the this harmonic oscillator, um, the equation of motion. So yeah, I don't think I had any other follow-up question. Let's see. Uh, zero phase shift, yeah. Acceleration of all about the field. So cosine function, yeah. So yeah, I guess, um, yeah, yeah, I don't think I asked for any other follow-up interpretation. So that's good. Um, yeah, looks good. And you even um, had the same choice that I made um, about what function you would choose. But, you know, sign is a perfectly valid one to choose. If you say, oh, because I'm more familiar, yeah, that's fine. Uh, either guess at the solution gives you reasonable um, kind of behavior for uh, oscillatory function. 